Hello, welcome back to the channel. I've had a lot of requests to do a, a video about which devotions are the best to use. That is a really, <laughs> there's there's not a good answer to that. Well, there is a good answer to that, and that is, it, is, it, it depends on your build, depends on damage type, depends on what you want to do, depends on whether you want to focus on dealing loads more damage or getting a lot more defensive buffs. Now, what I'll do in this video, and I I know I'm, I'm trying, trying to drag on, what I'll do in this video is cover all, not the, not the constellations that are just star constellations that give you various points and whatever. I'm going to cover all the level one constellations that have skills on them. So what we're talking about here is anything that's got a skill on it. There's these boys. Now, all the ones that are highlighted here, I did my best to put a few points into them just to make them a bit more obvious what's going on. I've put one point in each of the nodes around the crossroads. So what that's done is it's it's made the all the all the single point constellations light up. So all these ones that are lit up at the moment, everything on there that's lit up, you can get at it by putting one point into, not in all of those, it's like that'll light up all the blue ones. That's all the one point golds, so the one point purples, greens and reds. And what you can see here is with a, with a one point in red, you can put points into that and get to that skill. Same with that one point in red, you can put, you only need four actually, because that's not part of it. You, you can get to that before you get to his foot. I think the rest of them you need, actually no, that's the same. So yeah, so the, the minimum amount of points you're going to need is a single point, say, in in the crossroads point that you're interested in and then one two three four points to get down to that skill and on that one five so the maximum you'll need is six the minimum you'll need is five so what i'm going to do create a new character i'm not going to use merits i'm not going to there's no messing about no well no exploits no cheating i'll create a new character i will record the shrine acquisition in the first area with that one the quickest way where in my opinion the quickest way to get your six con um, devotion points to to populate and get a skill on each of these and then oh the character i'm gonna i'm gonna set up a, a necro as the first mastery and then i'm not entirely sure maybe a demolitionist second because i want to be able to show you what happens if you attach the attack skills to pets skeletons are, are a good example because they've got a, you know that particularly with something like that you can stick that on skeletons but rather than do it all in a grim tools window and just say yeah this this does this this does that i'll set it all i'll set the character up with each of these on the attack or whatever um some of them are not that's an attack one most of these are attack ones i think ghouls probably oh, ghoul and turtle are the only ones i think that are not on attack could be wrong about that i'm pretty sure i'm right about that but yeah like i said i'll i'll demonstrate each constellation skill what it's doing and i'll try and run the character up against the same enemies it's all the same area of the map using different constellations bound to attack skills pets the lot I don't know how long this video is going to be. I'll put some timestamps in, um, but hopefully it will answer a few of the questions. And then later on, I'll do one or two, maybe so I don't know how many more videos it's going to take to compare some of the more higher level constellations. So right, I will now get into it without further ado. I'll call it Devo Demo. Devotion Demonstration. Not in hardcore. Because, <laughs> just because. Right, there she is. Right, like I said, no messing about, no crucible, no merits, nothing. Let's just get in there. Go grab the first devotion. What I do actually, I'll, I'll try and put a few useful hints and tips in. If you rotate the map a little bit, rotate the screen, you can grab this. I always do this. I mean, it's a quick way to get. I know I said I wasn't going to do any exploits and cheating, but... Actually, no, I'll show the level ups because that might help somebody. Point in physique, as always. Right, what did I say I was going to do? Necro and um, Skellies. Uh, I'm going to put that on one. Point in physique. 
So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to max them out while raising this, because I want to get to that, because that's the node that increases the number that you summon every time you summon them. Level 4. Point in physique. Right, here's a tip. <laughs> you're going to change anything to do with the skeletons. Wait till you're not in a fight. Because when you do that, they disappear. Uh, actually, I don't want anything else at the moment. You're on your way up to Burial Hill. You get plenty of opportunities to pick up ether crystals, so just get as many as you can. You need one for the devotion shrine in here. And your shrine's down there. Okay. Point in physique. Um, one point in there, two points in there. Summon them back. At the moment I can only summon three. That'll change in a bit. Uh, I'll take the reanimator out first and then go and get the shrine. Right, he's down. Pretty much. Ooh, got anything good? Let's see what we got. Anything? No, I'll stick with a gun. Actually, I'll get a shield now. I'll stick with a gun for now. I mean, it's the game's gives you two ether crystals right here. It's like they. <laughs> They're not going to mess you about. They're not going to get you up to this shrine and have you in a situation where you can't restore it. Not the first one. Because I reckon 999 times out of 1,000, this would be, if you, you play the game normally, this would be the first shrine you, you get to. But you might not see it. Because it's possible when you come in, I mean, when you come in on the map here, it's, it would be possible to come down, kill a reanimator and leave without noticing it. And I'm pretty sure quite a few people the first time in here, that's what they do. Anyway, you restore that shrine with one ether crystal. At this point, I'm going to turn off common items in the loot filter just because. Right. Um, so at the moment, I'm not going to bother putting any points in here really until I've got my six and then I'll do it all in one go. Here's the spirit guide. This is where you reset your points. So what you can do with her, which I'll be doing quite a lot, <laughs> is, um, yeah, you can undo points that you've allocated and devotion points as well see so another reason to pick up the ether crystal so you can get another skill point so as well as the xp for that i've got an extra skill i've got one from leveling up okay um point actually what i can do is there you go I can summon four of them now. Only three at a time, but a maximum of four. You've got a choice. You can either run up to Whitemire and get one up there, or go into here now, because Viloth the Corrupter, I mean, I, I would, I'd go in there and take him out, but because he's not that much of a... He's not that easy. So what I'd suggest is... Go back to the one you portal down from, nip up to the Whitemire one. Almost missed level 7. That was uh, <laughs> it's a problem with switching the recording on and off. Right, what have we got? Oh, that was a bit of a mistake. Right, two points in physique. I think I missed a level up. Um, three points. So what I'm going to do now is try and max these boys out. Stick one point in the mastery, one point in that, one point in that. Can't do that. You, keep, you get them maxed out as soon as possible. Because the thing is, unlike, unlike a spell, if you're doing an arcanist and you max out Panettis, or something like that, what you'll notice is that your energy is just going to get totally wrecked Every you know, if you're spamming the spell. But the skeletons, because they get the stronger they get, the longer they last, so the less often you have to summon them. So you can max them out, and it's not going to you're not going to notice a, an energy issue. Well, you shouldn't do. I'll get the map up in a minute, just show you what's going on, right? So, the so that was the shrine I just Sorry, I get confused. That was the rift that I just opened up. And I am... There it is. So you can see... You pretty much head... North... Well, northwest and then 
north-ish, slightly east, is the cave entrance. There's two entrances to this cave. This is the closest one to that rift, I think. Actually, if you come down here, there's possibly one down here, so you might... But yeah, this is the one I always go to first. Right, here we go. Open that up. Right, skeletons, get in there. Stop killing things. Yeah, skellies are getting a bit better now. Right, shrine cleanse, there you go. My inventory is full. It is indeed. Right, so what you notice now, I've got two devotion points out of 55. I haven't allocated any yet. I'm not going to do that until I get the six, and it'll make a bit more sense what I'm doing. Right, level nine, point of physique. One, two, three. Get them back. Try and get all five back before. Ooh, there's a, there's a totem. Totem. Big money, big prizes on the totem. I'll get that. Clear that thing out. Uh, let's do it. Ether. Nice. Yeah, I'm just keeping an eye on... There you go. I've lost one skeleton. As soon as I lose another one, I'm going to summon three of them again. Down to four. I've leveled up. Let's get them back. That body there, that rotting corpse, let's get the map up. If you come down from... White Mirror, it's not, it's not showing the other one. The other one's up here. If you, you come down from Foggy Bank Rift and... At this spot here, where I am, this body's always got Carvos's conjuring bone on it, Carvo, whatever, there you go, which is a pet offhand. Right, getting close to the next shrine. Head down here, head into Flooded Passage. There's another rift in here to open up. Pathing in here is a bit random. They've got block paths that randomly appear. One you flying muppet, there we go, lovely. Oh look at all that. Cage souls, cage souls is pets. Of the wild is pets. Interesting thing about this is you can just trigger this because the things that come out of here will fight the slith. Well, if there's any slith left for them to fight. Nice infernal. Nah. Right, so I've got three. Okay, beautiful. I've got three motion points. Let's go get the other three. It's just a necklace of some of that. Right, up by the Burwich outskirts rift is a book. Read that. Get the quest to get the blacksmith. What I'll do though is I'll go straight and get the go straight up and get the shrine before I do anything else. Oh wait, yeah, there's quite a lot of these boys. Ugh, spiders. Right, I'll just leg it to the shrine cave. This up here. As long as plast not blocked with fire, sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's through there, but there's another entrance up here. Here's the other entrance hidden behind these bushes. Right, so where I am, I came to Burwich Outskirts Rift. Where it's outskirts rift is there, so you head east and then kind of northwest up this path. Like I said, you can go down there and get into the cave, but there was a fire thing randomly blocking the path, so I'm at this one. Get in here. Here's your sh oh, come on boys out of the way, here's your shrine over here. Was that path blocked? Why wouldn't it be? Try to dodge these ether muppets. This is another one that needs an ether crystal. Not a fight. That one there. There it is. Ruined shrine. Here it is. Look. In the cave. Grab that. Oh, it is really, isn't it? Okay, I'll tell you what. Let's, uh, let's get rid of the magic ones now. Anything to drop? No. Is that any good? No, because it's got no pet stuff on it. 
Right, so I've got four, two more to get, and I can start doing my thing. Now, you've got a choice here. You can run up to, well, actually, you've got to get the Burwich one. We'll go get the Burwich village one. And then we'll get the Viloth the Corruptor one, which is probably what most people, most people would have got Viloth by now, I'd have thought. Are we safe? No, not yet. Okay. Just want to do a bit of map. Okay, so where we got to here. Your Burwich village rift is down there. It's not shown on the map, so I'm too far away. So you come up here, all the way up round get to there you can usually go up this path but it was blocked so i went through the house and they came out there and the shrine's there so that's this one desecrated it's a fight they made that look easy nobody died good stuff I can't, carry can't carry anymore right so i've got five okay one more point and we can get going on this so if you go out here and talk to Burb and he'll ask what that commotion was. With all the commotion, there you go. Friendly! Oh, I love being friendly with Devil's Crossing. Right. So what we do now to get the sixth and final, well for the purposes of this video, final devotion point. Head down into the, the Convict's Tunnel. And run like hell to the Viloth fight. Oh, one thing before we run on, let's stick some points in here, right, three summon limit, let's get my three summon limit up and put a couple more points in that, I think. Right, when you get to the second floor of this area, you're going to have from the Convict's Tunnel into Devil's Aquifier. So this is where you come into the second floor, work your way round, kill a bunch of stuff, and you get to here. You can see on the map there's the Ruined Shrine, it's another one that needs uh, an Aether Crystal. Right by that shrine is Viloth the Corruptor, who is the boss, who's the target of this quest. So a little star should appear on there in a sec. There he is, look. There's Viloth on the map, right by that shrine. So you shouldn't miss this shrine. It's pretty easy to get to, and it's right by the target of the quest. Uh, he's dead. Yeah, I was too busy talking and not paying enough attention to what was going on. So don't do that. This is Monster and Freakman Ring. See, that's quite nice. If you acid damage on a Nightblade. Need to fire, just pick that up. Right, so the last, for the purposes of this video, the last shrine I need is this one here. Ether Crystal. Boom. So I'm level 14. And i now got six points so we go back to thinking about all those level one I call them level one what I mean is if you stick one point in any of those it will light up certain constellations and there are level one constellations like that one and that one and that one and that one you need one point in their respective affinities to allow you to start putting points into them working your way towards a skill like I said, all the level 1s, you only need a maximum of 6. Some need 5, some need 6. You get 6, you're laughing. Then you can have a look around and see what you want to do. I'll put one point into those and then we can we can attach devotion points to these things. So I can demonstrate it on a default attack. Demonstrate it on that. Demonstrate it on that. Demonstrate it on them. First up... We do this one because we'll, we'll start here and kind of go clockwise um so that needs one point in red which is that one there so now this shows you what what skills in your mastery you can attach it to and what skills in your mastery you've actually put a point into so although you can attach it to all this stuff you haven't put any points into them so you can't attach it i can attach it to fire strike so we do that, and I'll try and stay outside so you can see what's happening. So when I start shooting, or hitting things, I should get a ring of flame come up around me. It's not all the time, it's like a percentage chance on attack. Here they are. There we go. 
There it is. You can see that ring of flame coming up. Actually, can I? No, I can't. Um. Uh, it's a shame the skellies are running around, but it doesn't really matter. So when I hit things, there you go. Look, it's that ring of flame. You could see that coming up when I hit stuff. So what you can also do is attach it to Blackwater Cocktail. Yeah, see, so when it's hitting them, I get this flame thing coming up around me. Stun Jacks will be the same, I reckon. Yeah, apart from Stun, stun Jacks has got a cooldown on it. Right, so let's do that. So what you notice here, it's got an 85% chance on attack bound to Stun Jacks. Stun Jacks got quite a long cooldown on it. Blackwater Cocktail hasn't got a cooldown on it, so it's only a 25% chance on attack. Now, I won't bother with that. Stick it on Skellies. Right. <laughs> this is this is always fun. So just watch how many flame torrents come up when the Skellies go into attack. See they're, they're triggering it quite frequently. The stuff's dying so quickly you can hardly notice it. There look, it's up on more than one. So each of them has a chance to have that flame circle when they when they're attacking something. It's not restricted, it's not like a limit to how many of those flame circles there can be. Like on you, it's just like the one, but on them, they've all got the chance to have it going on. Right, here we go. Keep an eye out for how many of those flame circles come up now. Look at that. See, it's all over the place. So if you if you're doing a doing a pet build with skeletons early on, my recommendation is doesn't matter what damage type you're going to ultimately be doing on pets. Stick that on skeletons and then they just do a crazy amount of extra damage and all of them have got the chance to have it spouting off them. Now you won't be doing this. Well I hope you won't be doing this because this isn't <laughs> this isn't the best way to play but what I'll do now is I'll go and reset all my devotion points. See, it costs 25 iron bits and one ether crystal. Now, luckily for me, I've got about two and a half thousand of these things in shared stash. So if you're a new player, you won't. You might have a dozen or so of them knocking around. And I've got on my personal fortune, 14,000 iron bits. That's just from playing for an hour without really trying to make money. So what we want to do next. So you've done that. Um, let's see. It's a poison one. It's a poison one that's got things spinning around. Which isn't bad. Well, there's Tsunami. Now, Tsunami, I'll tell you the interesting thing. Interesting facts about Tsunami. As far as I know, possibly others. For the level for the level 1s, Tsunami is the only constellation where the constellation name is exactly the same as the skill name. It's confusing as hell. The rest of them have all got different names, like this one. Imp, Ether Fire, Fiend, Flame Torrent, Ghoul, Ghoulish Hunger, Eye of the Guardian, Guardian's Gaze. Acheron Scorpion, Scorpion Sting. Bull, Bull Rush. Dryad, Dryad's Blessing. See, they're all, this is, this is a bit of a silly one. Tortoise, 
turtle shell. Well, tortoises and turtles aren't the same thing, but you know, I don't really mind. Let's do tsunami because this. Right, there's tsunami. Again, I'll put it on fire strike. I want to ditch those skeletons, really. So they don't kill everything before. This is just so you can see what happens with Tsunami on Fire Strike. There it is, look. It's that tidal wave thing, obviously, as in Tsunami. See, it shoots out in front of you. And takes a lot of things. That's got quite a good range on it. Right, so that's what it looks like on Fire Strike. Oop. Stick it on Blackwater Cocktail. It'll do the same thing. Again, it's... Yeah, it comes from you, so it's not linked to the thing that you're chucking, it's it's actually on... There you go. Can I put it on? I can, oh yeah, I can. I'll put it on Ill Omen, I'm not entirely sure. I think this will just do exactly the same thing. Let's go, let's go up here. So Ill Omen is this thing, you've got to... Yeah, it's the same. Oh, yeah, okay. So when it affects them, it's when it affects them, it has a chance to trigger. So if you stick it on a whole group, where's a big group? Yeah, okay. Again, it's not. Um, It's not brilliant, is it? Not brilliant on Elomen, it's all right. Stunjax will be the same deal, I think. But again, it will have a higher chance to trigger on Stunjax because Stunjax has got a long cooldown. Yeah, that's pretty much going off every time, isn't it? Yeah. Is it 85% again? Let's have a look. 100% chance on attack. Not bad. Okay. So that's worth knowing. That's because of the long cooldown on Stunjack. So you've got 100% chance of that going off. Might be a few other skills that are like that. With Stunjax. Yeah. Okay. So if you're doing... If you're doing like a cold damage, lightning damage build that's quite good right let's stick it on skellies this should be funny let's go and find some bad guys or it's outskirts there's always a oh load this <laughs> I'm actually quite excited to see I've never done I've never done this before I've never I've never put um, tsunami on skeletons before I don't know what this is going to do if it does like the like the fire circle thing where they've all got a chance to proc it. <laughs> this could be quite funny. Let's see what they do. Okay, I don't know how many of them did that then. That definitely came off one of them. What I want to see is like six tidal waves shooting across the screen. Look at that go. What's the chance to proc on skellies? 35 yeah so it's a slightly it's got a slightly higher chance overall than the f <laughs> yeah okay yeah eat eat tidal waves <laughs> all right that's quite funny i like that ooh, uh, ooh, they, they don't like it though go on get them spiders look come up here go on take them out tidal wave them all right, let's see what happens with this. Get in there. Eat my tidal wave, monster. 
Yeah, that is. I like that. Flipping leveled up on it as well. Okay, well, I, I'm not going to put any points in. I'm not going to be put, put any points into anything. So it's, um, you know, so it's the same. It's the, it's the same character. I'm not. I'm not going to level up. I'm, just, I'm not going. I'm not going to put points in there. I'm not going to put any points in there. I'll leave it. So <laughs> I just. <laughs> oh dear. I'm going to have to create a pet build and just use tsunami on skeletons because it's so funny. Watch this now, look. Here we go. <laughs> They're just getting washed away. Okay, that's a beautiful thing. I'll, sw I'll swap. I'll go back to the spirit guide and swap, even though I don't want to. That was, that's awesome. Clear your mind of regret. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm clearing my mind of regret. Well, I regret undoing that because that was funny as hell. Right, what are we going to do next? Um, so we've done a... We've done a red one. We've done a blue one. That's a heal skill. Mm, boring. Um, it just lowers their resistances. Ah, oh, what's going to be good? I'll tell you what, we'll do. Let's do this one, and then this. Yeah, let's do this one. Stick out on fire strike. Okay. So what do I do? That's on fire strike. So what this does, it creates this little spinning ball. Um, circle there it is. Let's see circles around you. You can get more than one. There you go. I've got a few on the go now. So if you're doing a poison build, or a Dreeg's evil eye is quite a good one because you've got Dreeg's evil eye that you're shooting out, and then you've got these other weird eye things circling around you. But it's not the most spectacular looking thing. Come on, where is it? There you go. I've got two. Can I get more than two? Can I get three? Maybe if I was fighting a, something big. One, just one. Okay, so you, you can see what's going on there. Stick it on Blackwater Cocktail for a bit. Actually, just put it on Stun Jacks, see what sort of... 51% chance. Okay, so that's got an overall quite a lot lower chance uh, than Tsunami. But um, it's still quite high. Let's go find some... Let's go see where these groups are in Whitemire. What did I put it on? Stun Jacks. Right, okay. Oh yeah, look. Okay, I've got three on the go there. That's because the chance to prop is a lot higher on this. How many have I got? Three? Is that a maximum? There's three of them, look. Is that a maximum of three? Does it say? I think it does. Current level... Well, unless I'm missing it, it doesn't say how many. But it does attack damage converted to health. Okay. Where's Milton? Yeah, look at that go. All right. It's no point putting it on Blackwater Cocktail because you know what happened on there. It would happen the same, it just wouldn't happen as often. Right, let's stick it on the skellies and see what. <laughs> I got a suspicion this is going to be not as fun as you might think. Let's go back up here. Yeah, I suspect what will happen is it will it will trigger off one of them and there'll be one going round, and. Yeah, I, they're not all going to have this because it's, it's, I noticed this when I put callbacks I or callbacks whatever it was. I put um, I put that on skeletons once. It's the same thing, and 
I only had one going round. I thought I'd have millions. I think it'll just it'll just trigger off one of them, and it won't trigger off the other. So I don't think you'll have millions of eyes flying round because that would be really good. Yeah, look, there's one, two. Let's get this totem going. This would be a good, good test. There's three, but they're just on the one guy. See, look, once it's on one of them, it doesn't happen on the others. That's what I'm seeing anyway. Is that one of them's got it triggered and the others don't have it? It's not on me. It's on how many is there? Three. Oh, was that four? Hang on. Maybe there were four. Let's get this totem going. Yeah, look, it's just on them. It's not on all the others. It's just on this one guy. I do one of these pet builds, and I, I put that on I have Korvac on skeletons, and it did the same thing. I thought there were going to be millions flying around. That's like a fire version of this eyeball thing. It's quite as good. Right, let's do the next one. What troubles you? What troubles me? Oh, what troubles me is I'm making these videos, and it's taking hours. <laughs> Right. Farewell. Farewell. What are we going to do next? Um, oh, let's do the other green one. Why not? Let's do this one. Uh, stick it on fire strike. This is a poison thing that's just centered on you. Shoots a lot of stuff out of the ground. Or doesn't? Why is that not working? 25% chance on attack. Okay, so we've hit him four times. No, it's not working. Come on, let's see one of them. There you go, that. If you've got Blight Fiend, it's a really good one to put on Blight Fiend, because Blight Fiend does a load of poison acid damage anyway. But, hang on. I'm trying to show you. There's Blight Fiend. I have got enough points for him. Okay, so that's a little bit uninspiring. What I'll do is that's 25%. So if I stick it on Stun Jacks, it's going to go up to about 80 again, isn't it? 85, yeah, nice one. Okay, so this should happen all the time. I say all the time. I know 85 is not 100, but it's um, it's a percentage chance, so it's I reckon it's going to happen pretty much all the time. Yeah. I'll just wait for one where it doesn't happen. See, it's happening on pretty much every... Yeah, okay. So that's all right. Right, let's get out of here. And stick it on the skeletons. Now I've got a suspicion. Thing is, every time I've done a necro, I've stuck it straight onto Blight Fiend. I haven't put it on the skeletons. I've never done that. I might have done. I didn't think. Oh, I've got one left. Uh, okay. So um, I think this will be the same as the fire. I think you get a lot of these going off. I don't think it will be restricted to happening on one skeleton. I think it'll happen on more than one. That's my that's my prediction. I'm quite happy to be proved wrong. Let's see what happens. See how many of these things come out on these skeletons. There's one over there. I want to see more than one on the screen at the same time. Just to prove that's what's going on. There's oh wow, I'm almost. What about here? This might be good. Oh to tell. It might only be happening on one of them at a time, I don't know. Like I was saying, if you've got a if you've got Blight Fiend, stick it on Blight Fiend is a really good one to put on Blight Fiend. Because you've only got one Blight Fiend, I mean well unless you unless you get that one specific set of endgame gear where you can have two Blight Fiends, but then by that point you're not gonna be too worried about the odd devotion. 
Come on, guys. Let's see more than one of these things go off at the same time on the ground. I can't. I don't know. Jewelry's still out on this. Let's go to Burridge Village. Hang on. Let's try this. There's a whole load of stuff south of here. This might be a better test of it. The other thing is, if you've got ranged skeletons, it's going off around them, but they're nowhere near anything. Whereas a blight fiend will be running into a whole group, like tanking for you. Oh, there's a. Let's go down to that totem. Come on, quickly, quickly. Oh, I can't leave him behind. Well, I'll be. Hello, old Grim. Right, let's get this totem going over here. Let's see. Oh, come on. Come on, boys, get in there. Oh, no, they're all chasing me. That's no good. Right, let's have a look. I don't know. I reckon maybe it's only happening on... Oh, I've levelled up again. Okay, fair enough. Subjugators overseer, are you? Okay. I'm not going to use any of this stuff. Caged souls, that's pets. Right. Well, that was a little bit... Like I said, if you've got a Blight Fiend, stick it on Blight Fiend and you won't have any regrets. Skeletons, not so much. I sense turmoil within you. You sense turmoil with... I'm not surprised. I've, I've swapped my devotion so many times. I've got some kind of... I don't know what I'm doing. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's a pet thing. Now, you can't attach that to pets. You can't... Something that buffs pets directly, you can't put on pets. Because for obvious reasons. Because you just create a, you know, an infinite loop of buffing. So you've got to put that on one of your skills. See what I mean? You can put it on, put it on your stuff, but you can't put it on any of the pets. You can't put it, There's no pet stuff lifted, listed there. Yeah. That you can put on skeletons. So I'll put it on fire strike first. What's the percentage chance? Another 25, isn't it? 15. Oh my god. Okay, so that's like. It's that gold thing that comes shooting out. It's all right when it's shotguns, when things are close to you, but you know it's half the time, it's just missing everything. Right, let's... I'm, I'm not going to bother with Blackwater Cocktail, because I know what's going to happen with that. Let's stick it on Stunjax. Stunjax is always... Right. There you go. Yeah. As, as expected, it's going off every time. I reckon it's another 85%er. Oh, didn't hit anything. That's why it didn't go off that time. Yeah, now you see, what I like about this... Because cause with stun jacks, you're aiming in a particular direction and throwing them, and they spread out. And then the falcon swoop does the same sort of thing. That's actually nice. Two, I mean, you got like a multiple shotgun effect going on there. Right, what's the... It's 85, isn't it? It's got to be. 51. Okay, okay, so it's 51, but... Still happening frequently enough to make it viable. Yeah, it's when they take damage, see? Not necessarily when you throw it. Okay, I like that. That is actually quite good. Right. Let's stick it on. Like I said, there's no point putting that on Blackwater Cocktail. It's just going to happen less often. So you know what's going to happen with that. But let's put it on these boys and see what happens. Because see, the, the difference now is the ranged ones, If it will work just as well with them as with the melee ones because it's a ranged attack. Or it works like a ranged attack. Right, let's see how many of these come flying out when they start attacking these boys. So 
See what I mean about when the ranged ones are doing it, it's still hitting things. Yeah. What's the... Hang on, just get... Yeah, look at that. That's actually quite nice. It's that healer's healing them, but now he's not. Okay, so what's the percentage chance on the skellies for attacks? 15%. So a low, low percentage chance, but that actually works quite well. Still, okay. You're very perceptive. Safe journey. Safe journey. You can only bind that to yourself. 100% chance of 50% health. So you, you stick that on flame touched, which is a permanent toggle skill. I mean, don't forget to toggle it on, obviously. And then, what's it saying? When your health drops below 50%. Yeah, 50%. So you, you get damage below 50% health it will give you a 500 damage absorption. So it will set this shield up like a thing. I'll, I'll, let's do it, why not? I'll show you it happening because it's not exactly thrilling. It's not when you attack anything, it is attached to that permanent toggle skill. It's not. It's nothing to do with that permanent toggle skill. It's nothing to do with flame touched. It's just saying that you need a skill to be active for it to do its thing. Right, let's go and find some guys to wear me out. Poison dudes will do it. Go on kids, get me health down to 50% and 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, boom. There's my turtle shell. You like you can see it. See it? That gold bubble that's around me. So the next few times they hit me, they won't damage me. Because I've got that protecting me for 500 points of damage but as soon as that 500 there you go then it's got a then it's got a cooldown on it so they if, if they take me down to 50 percent again it probably won't trigger because it, the cooldown hasn't run out yet yeah see it hasn't triggered again because the cooldown hasn't so you've got to keep an eye on that and the thing is unlike your normal skills because it's a devotion skill it's not showing up there to show you that it's um on a cooldown but it is bat twin fangs haven't done bat haven't done him by the okay yeah okay 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 okay, okay. it's like on fire strike so this is a it's like a life leech skill it shoots a couple of um spiky fang things out in front of you so when you attack stuff you get a chance to leech life back with this thing. Did I put it on fire strike? Yeah, I did. What's the chance? 20% chance on attack. Come on. You'll see him shoot up the screen when it um, when it triggers. There you go. Red things that shot up the screen. There they go again. And if they got a chance, they say they got a chance to pass through enemies. I'm sure it did. Did it? 100% chance to pass through enemies. So if you've got a whole group in front of you and you attack one, let's try and get it to do it here. Oh, of course he's in. Oh, right, this might work now. Yeah, see, it hit the ones behind. It's quite quick the way it does it, but yeah, smashing stuff as well. So when you when you shoot stuff, hit stuff, whatever, it shoots out in the direction that you're facing, spreads out two fangs, and anything it hits, it will damage them and leech life for you. Now you can put that on stun jacks, and you'll get. 68% chance on attack. 
Let's go to do a couple here. This will just shoot out a lot more frequently now. And again, because it's going in the direction you're throwing the stun jacks. There you go. Yeah, see? So although that's quite good, what you've got to be aware of with, with a lot of these things is the damage type it does, piercing and vitality damage. Now, if you're not dealing piercing and vitality damage, it's kind of diminishing returns because this thing buffs bleeding damage, vitality damage. So if you're doing fire damage, although at the start of the game when you're running around with that, it might be working quite well. It will rapidly drop off in effectiveness. So you've, you've got to take that into consideration. Stick it on the skeletons and it's a bit pointless. Because it will, it will leech health for them, not for you. Which is alright, but again, it's um, there are much better things you can put on skeletons than this. And again, it will still have that really low chance to prop. You can see it shooting out every now and again from them. But if you look at their health, I mean, they're, they're still getting damaged. It's not like it's not like a miracle cure for skeletons that they never did never die. Look at that one. Look. Trying to see if any of them are getting help back from it. Possibly are. But again, it's yeah. Look at them. Look, they're 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 taking quite a bit of damage. Not getting much health back. I I wouldn't recommend it. It's all right on you if you're doing vitality damage. Not so much on the skellies. Right, so I'll get I'll get these points back. There's um there's not an awful lot of point <laughs> picking that one, Targus Hammer. What that does is let's get out of this. Hang on a sec. Targos Hammer, so that is a 33% chance on block. If you have to have a shield, if you've got a shield, the shield's got a block chance. If you block an attack this has got a chance to occur and it um it sets up a what's it say so i know it's something that spins around you so you've got like a hammer shaped thing it's much like the, the the green orb that was on that thing circles around you deals damage whatever um there's no point putting that on skeletons and stuff their chance of blocking i mean i don't know I, it just seems to me that's one that you want to put if you're using a shield stick that on if you're doing physical damage retaliation damage i'm not going to bother showing you that one if you're doing a shield build stick it on see if you like it um don't use it on pets that's a debuff it lowers the resistances on a critical attack again is it worth putting on pets I'd say no. I mean, you might get a little tiny bit of utility benefit out of it, but <clears throat> usually with pets, I want to see a bunch of stuff happening. I want to see things exploding or tsunamis crashing across the screen. I don't want to have that. I mean, if you're doing a, a night blade or something that's got high cunning and you're going to get loads of crits, stick that on. Because if you look at the type of damage this is dealing, physical and pierce. So yeah, it's not a lot of point me putting that on anything. I mean, if you're doing physical and pierce damage and doing a lot of crits, grab that. A lot of these things um, are, are useful to get if you're not planning on keeping them. What I mean by that, I'm not going like to undo this, so it doesn't matter if I waste the points. So all these single pointers that are lit up, they're all self-supporting skills. So for example, if you pick blue, right, 
Tsunami needs one point in blue. Okay, so when you hover over that, affinity requirement one. So there's your one point in blue. But when you when you fill him up like that, that's now got a completion bonus of five. So that, that covers that one. So it's self-supporting. So what that means is you can then go back here and take that blue point out. So you've got one point. You've got one point that you've managed to reclaim because that thing supports itself. If you want to get to some of these ones on the outside where see that needs 10 blue, four blue, sorry, four gold, six blue, seven gold, 20 blue, eight red, 15 blue, seven red, 20 green. And they don't give anything back. The ones on the outside don't have a completion bonus. So to get to them, you've got to strategically grab constellations that will give you a, an affinity bonus that you need to, to work your way out to the outside. Now, a lot of these single pointers you can use to like jump to where you want to be. Say if you wanted um, Wendigo's Mark, right? It needs four red, but it gives two red back. So you, you could you could stick one point in that, three points in that, or grab that so you get two. So that's giving you one red. That's giving you two, it's give you three. He needs four. So you could put some points in something else, and when you complete him, you could take the points out of that because the other the other ones all add up to the the maximum number that he needs, as long as he's active. You've got those two reds that he's given you back. We'll do that. What's that? Gold, blue. Right, stick it on fire strike. Oh yeah, it's that red. It's that red circle on the ground. So you can see it's triggering. Doing physical damage. It's an area effect. See, it knocked that thing flying. Okay, this isn't bad. Good if you're melee. I mean, demolitionist isn't generally melee, but look at that. That's all right, actually. So, happy with the others. What's that got on it? 25% chance. We put it on our old favourite stun jacks to knock it up to 85. Yeah. It's going to be going off all the time isn't it look at that yeah that's all right actually you can you can chuck stun jacks out and then anything near you is going to get hit by that anyway it's pretty good okay let's see what it's like on the skeletons this one might be okay actually. I was a little bit skeptical. I thought it would be garbage, but it might be alright actually. Let's just fire them up first. Should I put it on skeletons? Yeah, okay. And you can see it happening because it's that red patch on the ground that comes up. Let's see what they do. Yeah, oh, it's happening on the rear. Yeah, again, when it happens on the ranged ones, not so brilliant. Unless they're getting swamped by enemies. Hmm, it's okay. I think that might be better on a single pet. Like summon Briarthorn. you got the Briarthorn. The Shaman's pet. Might be a good one to have on him. Because he's a tank guy that will be in the middle of all the fighting. Yeah, it's alright, isn't it? But yeah, I think on a single big pet it would be better used it's pretty good though it's going off all the time test it out on this Yeah, particularly when they all crowd round like that hero guy there. It's going off a lot there. Mm, not bad, okay. 
quickly do imp and ether fire. I mean, the damage type's not really good for this. It might be alright for the skeleton as well. What troubles you? Hang on, what's ether fire need? I don't know. The blue should have left that point in there. Stick it on there. Oh yeah, it's that. It looks very similar to what Kaizog chucks on the floor. But it's it now that's what's interesting. The one I hit it appeared underneath a different one. I'm pretty sure it did. Might not have done. I think it did. Okay, no, it's appearing under the ones I'm hitting, but it's good enough. Okay. So you can see what that's doing. It's just causing that green glot to appear on the floor. Let's stick it on stun jacks. Oh, nice check mark. 51% chance. So it should be going off quite a bit. Yeah, they don't like that at all, do they? It appeared under both of them. That's quite good. Let's get a big group. Where's a big group? Come on, come up here, guys. Let's get a big group of you together and see how well this works out. Yeah, that's pretty good. They don't like that at all, do they? Okay. So that's all right. Again, it's not as visually spectacular as some of the others, but it's doing a good uh, doing a good job. Stick it on the skellies and see what happens with them. So we're looking for patches of green ether glop spouting around on the ground. Let's see how many of them trigger this off. Because again, it happens underneath the things that get hit, so it's effective on the ranged guys. It's not happening underneath the person who's dealing the damage. It happens. Come on, where is it? There's some there, look. Don't know how many of them are triggering it. I want to see lots of it. There's one, two, three. Yeah, see, it's causing quite. That's quite good. Okay. Okay, I'd say that's a pretty good one to have on skeletons. Look at that. Look, look how many that patches are on the floor underneath. Yeah, this is good. So if they're all crowded around the boss, having a go at him. Level 18. As I said, I haven't been putting points in, so the you know I, I'm still pretty much the same character I was at level 15. Because when you level up, I mean, unless you put points into stuff, you don't improve. Oh, hero enemy killed. Let's try them out on this totem. I reckon they're going to wreck whatever comes out of here. Yeah, look at that go. Yeah. Now, one thing that's worth mentioning. Warden Crit... Oh, Leander Crit... Right, <laughs> if you're a demolitionist, you want that. Look at that. Plus one to all skills in demolitionist. Leander Green's hand cannon, and there's a there's an empowered and a mythical version of that. It's a really good gun. I'm not going to equip it because obviously it will. I don't want to put extra points in. Right, I got distracted by that. Um, yeah, what I was saying. There's Warden Krieg drops an item. I'll I'll go and I'll go and grab a grab a screenshot of it and overlay it on what I'm talking about here, so you can see what I'm talking about. Warden's judgment, which is which is an item that buffs pets and also converts, I think, it well, you can get up to 100%. It's always in the 90s. You can get up to 100% physical pet damage converted to ether damage. So the pets do ether damage, right? So that would be quite good because if the pets are doing ether damage and then you bind that to them, but or if you've got anything that buffs the pet's ether damage or, or any pet damage and, they're do, and you've got that Warden's Judgment as well as that, 
that kind of streamlines the kind of damage that they're doing. I don't know if that made sense. I mean, it's, it's not crucial, but it's nice if you want to keep track of what type of damage you're doing, particularly if you're Necro and you've got that up, Spectral Binding. So if you get hit with Spectral Wrath on it, it's got a thing that lowers physical resistance, nether resistance, and vitality resistance. So that, that all then ties in well, works nicely together. Right, that'll do, I think, for this. God knows, I, I mean, that's about... I am going to run around with this character now. A couple of hours, I reckon. Yeah. So it's two hours of running around doing stuff. I'm going to try and edit this video down to less than half an hour. you got to be fucking kidding. Hope you enjoyed watching this one, and um, I'll try and get a few more out about specific, do specific devotions, and I'll catch you all in the next video.